ladles and jelly spoons. Welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, now, this is uh, a continuation of our little build of, of Christine here. Now, in the last video, we finished the car, got it all done. Um, so what we need to do now is make a little diorama base thing for this to go on. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get on with it. Okay, now you may remember that um, our little car has lights in it, which we already know about. Uh, it's got the headlights, tail lights, and that kind of stuff. The radio lights up. And that brings me to the next point. I'm going to do something different with this one that I've never done before. Uh, or I have, but not in this fashion. So the first thing we're going to look at is this. This is a Kit Sound Boogie Buddy speaker. <laughs> and it's basically a Bluetooth speaker. Yes, this diorama is going to be wired for sound. Um, obviously, if you've seen the film, you'll know that, that music plays a big part in the film. Um, and so it seemed appropriate to do something similar with this uh, diorama. Now, I could have just put a sound card in it that played clips of music from the film. But I thought, why not go a step further and actually put in a Bluetooth speaker so that you can basically connect to it with your phone or whatever and play whatever music you like. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do is pull this thing apart and see how it works. So let me just get it out of the box. Uh, I, you may notice actually <laughs> part of this box is missing. If you remember when I made the, uh, the little plastic inserts for the lights in the car, this is what they were made of. <laughs> Anyway, um, right, let's get this out and uh, and see what we have. Um, yes, it is a, a whale, a rather creepy whale with no face. Um, right, let's put all this stuff out of the way. Um, now, it does come with a, a little instruction book and a little charging cable, which none of which hopefully we will need. Um, let's put all that to one side. Now, the way this thing works is you have uh, three buttons on the top. So that's the power button in the middle. And then you've got plus and minus. Uh, this thing is made of some kind of, I'm assuming, silicon rubber. You've got a charging port on the side here. And then on this side, you have what I assume is an SD card slot, which is actually quite handy. Um, we're probably not going to use it, but, you know, that's what it is, I think. So what I want to do is I want to mount this in the front of the base of the diorama. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of all of this, unfortunately, and see what we've got inside. So let me um, dismember away. <laughs> uh, so, oh, we might actually just be able to, I thought I might have to cut all this off, but maybe I won't. I think this might just be a, a cover that they wedged. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, let's pop that over there. Boogie buddy. Now, I will say I have had a little play with this speaker. And it's actually quite a nice little speaker. It works really well. Um, let me uh, switch it on. So you basically switch it on, you just hold the button on the top. And it plays that rather obnoxious no <laughs> noise. Uh, let me see if I can connect my phone to it. Uh, right, so my phone has paired with it. Uh, now let's find a piece of music. That's not um, going to get us into trouble. Although I suppose if I only play it for a few seconds, it won't hurt. Right, so that was a quick blast of uh, Mussorgsky's Night on the Bear Mountain. Just to, uh, <laughs> but you see, it's actually quite a good sound. Hopefully, it, that comes out all right. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good sound. So, uh, yes, it's quite a decent little 
little speaker actually. I mean, this came from Amazon. It was only about a tenner. I just basically looked for the cheapest one they had that was half decent. Um, so yes, it's actually quite a nice little speaker. So I think what we need to do, let's just turn this off again. There you go. Um, now the, the issue that we're gonna have with this, uh, charging it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, but it's these buttons that are going to be the issue because what we need to do is get these buttons to the front of the case because I'm gonna have this in the front now I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this I'm just wondering if I can just actually pop this open and get the get the guts out let me um, let me get a little screwdriver hang on so I don't know if this is actually glued together or just like pressed together There's a little, oh oh that's handy <laughs> the back just pops off so there's our battery so as I suspected it has a 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery uh, and yes it does have a SD card slot so this is nice because it means you could in theory just put an SD card in it and just have it play whatever you want uh, let's get those screws out so, oh See, I think the problem is the way I'm going to do this is you won't actually be able to use the SD card. I mean, I could, in theory, make it in such a way so that you could continue to use it, but I'm not sure it's really worth it. As I say, it says it's Bluetooth, so... Right, so... That's the board. That's what makes everything happen. And as I was kind of hoping, what we have here are three momentary switches... Um, actually, let me see if I can get you in a bit closer so you can see this thing a bit better. Uh, right, so now I've got this apart. I've just taken this. There's four screws in these corners, so I'm hoping this is all going to come apart. But before I do that, I'm just going to... I could desolder these wires, but I can't be bothered to get the, uh, <laughs> get the soldering iron out. This is the main thing that we want. Uh, so we've got here our charging port our SD card slot, which, to be fair, we I don't think we're going to be able to use that. It's also got a microphone on it, which is interesting. This little little, little round thing here is a microphone, which kind of makes sense. Um, so I suppose in theory, you could also use this to make phone calls, which would be quite handy. Um, now, the useful thing is it has these three, which is what I was kind of hoping. It has these three momentary switches. So what we should be able to do, hopefully without too much aggravation, is actually connect some extra wires to this and run some momentary switches to the front of the case. So, although in theory, there's nothing to say that we couldn't figure out some way to mount this so that you could get to the switches from the outside. Hmm. Have to think about this. Yeah. Anyway, um, we'll put that to one side for a minute. And what we need to do now is they've hot glued these wires on here, which is nice. Um, that's going to be fun, getting that out of there. Uh, but I've taken the four screws out of here. And now I'm just trying to figure out how this comes apart. I think this is the seam here. Yes, it is. Look at that. Now, what I don't want to do, I'm going to have to take the... Oh, what is holding that speaker in? Uh... Because the trouble is, that you probably see it there, they've put a big blob of hot glue on that and it's holding the wires. Uh, I think what I might do is just... Snip those wires off. Get off. Oh, these clippers are... I might have to get myself some new clippers, actually. I think these ones have pretty much had it. Mainly because I keep using them for cutting wire. <laughs> <laughs> which you're not supposed to do. Um, so, yeah. Now, see, what I'm thinking I might be able to do is if I can come up with a way to mount this, because this is, you can see it's kind of curved. I think I need to figure out what this shape is. 
see if I can recreate this shape in um, some 3D software uh, and make it so that I can actually mount this in the front of the case like it is and I can just paint it up with the rest of the case and we can actually use this to house the speaker because I want to use this speaker, it's a decent little speaker it's got plenty of oomph to it uh, and then obviously we need to mount the board somewhere um, but what I want to do as well because obviously we need to charge the battery on this so I'm going to use a charging circuit uh, to charge that which I have what have I done with that because obviously we've been using this battery here to um, power the lights and everything in the car and I'm just wondering because I could in theory uh, you know instead of using this battery I could either use both batteries or just one of them so, because what would actually be quite nice, because this is the charging uh, board here. So basically, this will be mounted in the back of the case. You can plug a USB port into it, or USB cable, um, and uh, you plug your battery in, it charges the battery, and then you've got outputs for, um, for whatever you want to power. So in theory, I can run power from this to this, and run both of them off the same one. Uh, but this has obviously got some kind of charging system built into it because obviously it's rechargeable. So I suppose in theory I could either use this to try and power everything. I wonder if I can connect the lights. I might do a little experiment actually. I might connect because I've got loads of these um, connectors. What I might do is actually connect one of those to this and then connect the lights to it and see if this battery is man enough to run the whole thing but what I'm toying with the idea of is having it so that you can basically have the lights or the sound or both um, which does give us a slightly different uh, setup because these USB ports, I've got loads of these, um, so in theory I could use both of them and have one charging board here, you know, basically like stack them like that, if that makes sense. Uh, but let me have a little think about this and uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do and um, we'll look at some of the other bits that we need to put into it. So, um, I've got the uh, circuit board in the clamp here. Now, you've seen me use this clamp before to do uh, straight and twisted frames and that, but this is actually what it's designed for. It's designed to hold circuit boards. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just soldering some wires onto these three momentary switches. And these switches are what controls the functions of the Bluetooth speaker. Um, so... Uh, the idea here, I don't want to take the, the switches off, um, so I'm just attaching some wires where they're soldered on. And just to give you an idea of what this is doing, um, the status LED is here. So if I take a switch, this is just a, a momentary push button switch. And if I take these wires, just attach that like that very quickly. And now if you watch the light here, when I press the button, it switches the speaker on. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just making the buttons remote. So, and then hold it again, it switches it off. So there we go. So I'm just putting the wires on first and then I'll put the, uh, I'll put the um, switches in afterwards. But this is the nice thing about this is it holds the circuit board nice and tight so you can solder it without, uh, you know, going all over the place it's just an extra pair of hands I'm not going to add any solder to this all I'm going to do is just put a little dab of soldering paste on each blob of solder because I say this this is one of these things where this is obviously soldered by a machine 
So, all right. And I will hold this with a pair of tweezers so that I can see what I'm doing. And it doesn't actually matter whether where you put the black or the or the white because um, they say all it's doing is just acting as a switch. So you just pop that in there like that, and. melt it in place and I'll do the last one and then we'll um, I'll show you how all this fits together right so the next thing we need to do um, what I've just done actually just to show you I've just uh, paired these wires up and I put a little bit of shrink wrap on there just so that you could so that you know it keeps the wires together and then I have put some um, just crimp on connectors I could have soldered these on and to be fair, that would probably be a better idea in the long run, but this will allow me to basically put it all together easier. And also, if anything breaks, you know, switch or something goes, it's easier to replace this, or to, you know, you can just unplug it and put a new switch in or whatever. So that's that on there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've got to reconnect the speaker. So what we need to do is desolder these bits here, these little bits of wire like that that's one that's two and now we can solder these pieces on so I'll just put a little bit of flux on there. And melt that in there like that, you see? Uh, Like that. And now, just move that back a little bit. Get the speaker. And I want to get something to hold this with. Alright, and the first thing I want to do is get these old bits off. that and now put the new bits on like that not the neatest soldering job in the world but you know it will do Right, so that's that. Uh, now, here's the other thing I've been thinking. Dangerous, I know, but follow me. Uh, what I've been toying with the idea of doing, because I was going to put two batteries in this. Uh, one to power the lights and everything, and then obviously this has its own uh, battery on the back here. Oh, this is now getting to the point where we're starting to turn into a bit of a rat's nest. It'll all be fine once it's in place, but... But you see, this has a battery of its own. So what I'm thinking of doing 
is it's only a 400 milliamp hour battery but I'm I'm thinking it might be an idea to actually run the whole thing just off of this battery uh, it just means it won't last as long but it should be alright um, so what I'm going to do is I have here a pair of these um, or a set I should say of these I think they're called JST connectors um, but they just basically plug together like that so obviously all the wiring for the oh I can't get it apart now all the wiring for the um, for this is all internal and just stays internal so that's fine but obviously we need to run the wires from the car through the base so what I thought of is if I use this on the car and attach this on here and route it to a switch, then basically I can just have one connector point. So when I put the car on the base, I literally just plug this in and it's done. So what I'm going to do is wire these up onto here. But I also need a switch. Now I have a switch here. So we'll go through all this again in a bit more detail so obviously I need to take one of the wires from this and go to this switch so I'm going to solder the positive onto here and I'm going to solder a negative wire on as well and then the negative wire will connect to the switch if that makes sense so let's do that so what we'll do is we'll put a drop of solder and paste on this wire And we'll try and do the same as we did with the other. So that's the positive. Now, what I've got to be a little bit careful of here is this fits into a slot on the base. I'll show you the base in a minute. So I need to make sure this wire is not going to get in the way of that. So I'm basically going to put it something like that. Now, let's see if this works, if I can do this without burning my fingers. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Uh... That's it. That's got it. Right. So that's that. Now, I need to put this connector on here and then one on here uh, where's me crimping tool there it is so we pop that in there and crimp and then we take this one And we put this on here. Oh, that didn't go according to plan. That wasn't soldered on there as well as I thought. Right, so now if I connect this switch temporarily, oh, turn that off, connect that and that. Then what we should have. move this back over here out of the way and get oh my daughter's turned up so hello Katie hello Katie what are you up to nothing oh, good 
We made circuits at school today. Did you? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here. So you can come in here and tell me how to do it. I can't. I'm not wearing shoes. Oh, yeah. Don't come in here with that shoes on. You ever use one of these? No. It's a multimeter. We were making logic gates. Logic? What on earth is a logic gate? It's a logic gate. Well, apparently so, yes. But what does that mean? I don't know. Well, you just said you made one. Yeah, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it does. They haven't told us that part. Oh, okay. Right, so... They, if... just, tell it, they just tell us that it makes the decisions and stuff in a computer or something like that. So, yeah. So, this isn't working for some reason. Oh, are you sure if you've got the, the AND gate and the things are thinking the things? What? An AND gate. Both of the things must be both of the output. No, both of the... Both, both, both... Oh, actually, I've outputs. got a sneaking suspicion this battery no. might be flat. Both inputs must be... Must have a true, so they must have a one to output one unless you have an OR gate and then you only need one or another or both to be on to output a, a, a thing yeah okay. you say so and then and then there's a NOT gate which if you put one in yeah yeah uh, it will be the opposite okay so if you put a power in the, the light bulb will be off but if you don't put a power in the light bulb will be on good Everybody taking notes? Oh. Is that meant to happen? Well, you probably find some of these connectors are touching and that's why they're... It's, it's, it's doing things. Oh, what's that? There we go, now we've got power. Yeah, the battery was flat. <laughs> Right. What's that bit? What's what bit? That, that stuff in the thing. What, in that pot? Yeah. It's soldering paste. Oh. It's basically flux for soldering. Yeah, pretty hot in here. Yeah, it is, you're right. Right, so... There you go, now we have power. That's Ooh. more like it. Right. Um, now I've got... Right, do me a favour, child. Hold that switch. Is it going to electrocute No, me? it's not going to electrocute. It's only 5 volts. It's not even 5 uh, volts. It's like uh, 3 volts. Uh. Right. Turn the switch off. Oh, yeah. Then it goes to zero, you see. I hope you can see that thing. But there you go. Right. Okay, that'll do. Leave it off. Thank you. Can I drop it? Yep. Good job. Well done. You're now an electrician. Yay! <laughs> Turn it off and turn it back on again. Well, exactly, yeah. There you go, you see. Turn it off and turn it back on again. Right. So, let's get rid of this. Um, I tried unplugging it and plugging it back in again. Uh, now, there's one more thing I want to do to this before we put this all together. So, in fact, there's a couple of more things I want to do, but one in particular. Um, let me tidy up a bit and then we'll move on. Bye. Are you going, are you? Yes, I was. Oh, okay. Say goodbye, Katie. Goodbye, Katie. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> right, so one of the things we need to consider is how we're going to power this thing or charge this thing. Um, now, I'm going to use one of these charging circuits. You've seen me use these before. Um, but I'm not going to use it in the traditional manner. So here we go. Because um, obviously what I could do is I could just connect the uh, battery connectors on this to this battery. Um, but this already has a charging circuit on it. And I don't really want to chop this and change this around too much if I can avoid it. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. So if we just look at this for a second, let's get the multimeter back in. So what we have on here is a number of inputs and outputs. So obviously this one here is where the USB plug goes in. This one, battery plus, battery negative, is where your battery connects. Uh, and then you've got out positive, out negative. But if you look at the front here, you see you've also got plus and minus, plus and negative, positive, negative. So if I just plug this in, 
So now, if I do out positive and negative on here, you see I get 3.4 volts. But here's the thing. If I come over to the front here, I get 5 volts or 5.1 volts. So what I'm going to do is something a bit sneaky. I'm going to basically use the, those two connectors and I'm going to take the charging cable that came with the speaker. I'm going to cut this end off and I'm going to wire this to those two ports and then just plug it in to the USB port on the board. And then that way you're basically just using this almost like an extension cable. But it also means that if this whole thing with this battery doesn't work and it's not man enough to run it all, then I can still use this to charge a secondary battery to power the lights and everything. So I'm kind of hedging my bets a little bit here. Plus the fact these things are like 10 a penny. Uh, <laughs> I buy these in bags of 50 from China. So I've got loads of them. So it's not really costing me anything. So let's cut this uh, plug off. Uh, figure out which wires which, and then solder out. Right, that was easy enough. So basically the way I did it was I cut the cable to length, and then the other end uh, here, I just basically bared off a couple of cables and checked them with a multimeter until I found plugs and negative, which was conveniently black and red. So that was nice. So what we're going to do now is Dunk them in there. And I've got to make sure I get these the right way round. So all I've done now is I've stripped this one and just cut the other cables back because I don't need them. Because basically uh, you've got two types of USB cable, in case you were ever wondering. Uh, you have um, a, a sync cable and a charging cable. So not all USB cables are the same. Uh, so a, a charging cable just has two wires like this positive and negative. A sync cable, which is what this is, has four wires. So it has positive and negative, but it also has two data cables. Um, but uh, yeah, it's sometimes you'll find you'll get a cable with something and you'll plug it, you'll, like your phone or something into it and it won't connect to anything. And that's because it's a, a charging cable, not a syncing cable, if that makes sense. So we'll pop that through there. We'll pop that through there, like that, bend that back over like that, right now, uh, let's get a bit of paste on there, Boom, that's that one. That's that one. Oh, it's come all the way through, that's nice. So I don't need to solder the top. And so now, hopefully the way this will work, he says, <laughs> what we do is we get this and we plug this in here like so, and now if we plug a USB cable into this, uh, which goes that way around, there's our charging light, you see. <laughs> and also it means I can still use the connectors on the back if I want to run, if I want to put another battery on here, um, I can. So, and it will, if I put another battery on here, this will charge both batteries, it will just take longer. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, now we've got one more thing to do before we start putting all this together. And I've left that to last for a reason, because it involves hot glue. But we'll get onto that in a second. Right, I just thought before I go any further, I'd do a little test and make sure this actually all works. 
So what I've done is I've just quickly soldered uh, this connector onto the car. This wire here is way too long, but I can't be bothered to shorten it, quite frankly. Um, so, and I've connected up the switch. So now if I turn the switch, we should get lights, which we do. Um, so that's fine. Now, if we turn this on, Oh, that's quite piercing through that speaker. Um, so yeah, it's all working. So that is fantastic. So now we can start thinking about putting all of this together. And I'll show you where it's all gonna go, but there's one more little thing I've got to do, because I've got to do the last bit all kind of at the same time. So one more thing to do, and then we'll put it all together. Or kind of as we're putting it together. Right, so we're just about ready to put this all together now. So what I've got here is a piece of uh, one millimeter fiber optic. Uh, this came from Component Shop on eBay, not an affiliate or you know anything. Just this is who I bought it from. Uh, and what we're going to do is, as we often do on these things, we need to bring these charging lights to the front of the box. I'll show you the box in a minute. So what I'm going to do is actually let's just unplug that for a minute oh get off so i'm going to attach this there are the two leds there and what i need to do is attach this to them and to do that i'm going to use hot glue so, what we need to do, I don't know if this is actually ready to go yet or not, I only just switched it on. I'm going to put a blob of hot glue like that over both LEDs and then take the fiber optic and pop it in there like that and then let that set. And what that should do with a bit of luck, if I plug a cable into here, oh, you can't see it very well, but that's basically transferring that light To the front or it will do so that's that now we can start putting all this together so let me have a little tidy up and then we'll put this all together right so here is the uh <laughs> the bit that i've been uh, waiting to show you all this is a 3d printed box for the base so this will sit underneath the display case which i'll show you in a minute um but what i've done is i have made this specifically for this project. It's one of the great things about 3D printers. Uh, I did this in Tinkercad, it didn't take very long. Um, and basically what it does is it has uh, a mounting point for the speaker, it has the three switches, and in the back here it has space for the uh, charging circuit and uh, a nice little bracket for the, uh, for the Bluetooth bit to go on. So now I've got to try and get all this in here. I'm just thinking actually it might be easy to put the charging board in first. Let's just pop this here for a second. So here's our charging board. And what I've done there, there's a hole in the back for the port, but I've also made this little shelf, if you like, for it to sit on. And there's a little bit raised bit at the back so what that does is that just basically holds it in place so that when you push on it, it can't push back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that down with a little bit of hot glue. Just a little dab. That's enough so 
So that goes in like that. And hopefully you can see, but what I've done is I've made that bit at the back narrow enough so it actually fits between the terminals. So if you had wires coming off of here, it would still fit. So let's move that out of the way for a second. And now we've got to try and get all of this in. <laughs> um, now, the reason I'm still using the hot glue is because what I've also done is I've just made a hole in the front and I've put a little piece of sprue in there, clear sprue, to bring the charging lights to the front. So that's where it's going to get fun. There's also a slot there for the SD card on the uh, on the board. So let's try and get this into position. Oh, now these wires need to go over here. The speaker needs to go in the middle, and now. This is going to be interesting. So let's just get that fiber optic out of the way of that. Because what I want to do is put these wires through the hole in the middle of the bracket. Not that though. Like that. Now I'm going to have to cut this. down a bit so let's get that somewhere actually that needs to go through that hole as well oh still like redecorating now see the letter box but still right you need to go around the back there so do you all the wires are all caught up ah All right, and then we need to get the get that into the slot, and then that should sit like that. Okay. So, unfortunately, as I suspected, the hot glue is in the way, but that's all right. So let's just trim this bit down. <laughs> so what I did was I just squirted it on the end of the screwdriver and then just used that as a spatula to put it in and hopefully that will hold. Right now, let's see if we can get all this together. Alright, let's just put that hot glue gun to one side before I burn myself on it. Okay, so that's in place. We need to pop the switch in the back. So there's a nice hole here. Oh, I'm covered in hot glue. So that goes in like that. And then we connect. Oh, hang on. This. to there that's a bit of a bowstring but never mind and then this one goes on the other one like that and that's what we plug our lights into now we need to get the USB cable into place. I could have done with that being slightly shorter, but still, never mind. Uh, which way around does that go? That goes that way around. That goes in like that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Uh, now for the speaker, what I did was um, where the speaker goes into this ring here, if you can see that, I've just cut a piece of um, mesh 
which is just some it's just a bit of plastic mesh that I had um, came out of an old speaker so I just cut a piece of that and put that in there now this should fit in there without any assistance like that perfect <laughs> excellent stuff right this is all going swimmingly so far uh, now we need to put all this stuff back on so I need to figure out which switch is which okay so uh, that's the middle switch I know that's the middle switch because I put tape on it because it kept turning itself on um, so this is the top switch and we'll do this one first it'll be easier to go from the bottom to the top so that goes on there and there then this one oh let's get that tape off of there that one goes on there and there and this last one goes on there and there like that there we go a little bit of a rat's nest but that'll be fine now just wondering what I might put a little blob of hot glue there just to help hold all this in place yeah I'm gonna put a little little dob of hot glue there that'll do right gobs the job as they say get rid of all these stringy bits oh more stringy bits and so now if I press the power button oh that is loud and hopefully you can see the blue light flash in there <laughs> oh that's perfect because I didn't want that light too bright that's why I didn't polish the end I just wanted it to be just just enough so you can see it that is wonderful. Um, so, uh, yes, that's absolutely fine. Now the switch at the back here, um, obviously will we'll control the lights, but that's a separate circuit. So we don't need to worry about that until we've got the car actually on here. But this now is basically a standalone Bluetooth speaker. Uh, the one thing that's slightly annoying, not annoying, but I, I wish there was a better way of doing it um, because it is what it is down here I don't know if you can see it in there there's actually a microphone so you can actually use this thing to make and receive phone calls so if you've got your phone connected to it and the phone rings you could in theory use this to answer it but I think that mic's not going to work very well but we'll worry about that at another time it's like I say it's not really what it was designed for so yeah okay um let's uh let's give this thing a try shall we now let me get my phone right uh so i while i was <laughs> getting my phone ready i actually decided to make a couple of minor changes i didn't like that hot glue there that i put there so i took that off and i've actually replaced it with a screw um which is much more secure uh so let's um give this thing a pop and see what happens so Unfortunately, I normally I would film this with my phone in front of it, but of course I need my phone for the, this. Anyway, um, so if we switch it on. And we see the blue light there. So that's now connected to my phone. Uh, and if I play something.
<laughs> now, you might think that sounds a little bit tinny, but that's because the top's open. If I put the lid on, And now I can use the buttons to control the volume up and down. I can restart. I can go to the next track. Pause. Say that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii from the air. I will think so, that President Roosevelt says that the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor in Hawaii from... I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> Turn this off. And there we go. So, <laughs> I'm very happy with that. So the next thing we've got to do is basically the top. So, um, yeah, we'll get on with that. Right, so here's the uh, the base. Well, it's kind of the, the lid now, but you know the base of the of the display box. Um, it may not look like it, but I have actually painted this. Um, I cleaned up the edges. There are lots of, of sharp edges, like where it come out the mold. Um, so I've cleaned those up, and I gave it a, a spritz with um, this uh, high coat matte black, and then gave it a coat of uh, matte lacquer just to kind of seal it up, and also to make it look a bit more like the box um, because that got the same treatment. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be fairly basic. I'm not doing anything too exciting with this. I just want this to look like concrete. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask up around the edges and then I'm going to put some filler on it. So let me mask this up and then I'll show you the filler we're going to use. Right, now that's all taped up, we can put some of this on. This is um, Ready Mix Filler, uh, came from the range, I believe. Uh, this has been in the cupboard for quite some time, so I don't know how good it's gonna be, but we'll see. Let's crack it open and have a look. Yeah, I think that should be all right. It's, it's dried around the edges here, but the actual pot's fine. I put the plastic back in to cover it up. Uh, I just need to find something to mix it with. Oh. I'll use this scraper. Yeah, it is kind of going off, but very, very slowly. But I think there'll be more than enough to do what we need. Right, let's dollop some of this on here. So I just want a nice thin coat. I don't want to go mad with it. You see like there, that's way too thick, but I just want to get it, get it covered over the edges first. And then I'll come back and smooth it out. But I just want to leave a bit of, I want a bit of texture on here to um, make it look like concrete. Right, I'll get the rest of this on and then we'll see what it looks like. Right, so I've covered all of this. I just went over it with my finger with some water just to smooth it out. And now I'm just going over it with a little bit of sponge and just tapping it very gently just to give it a bit of texture. Because I want it, like I say, to look like concrete. So... I'll do all of this. I don't know whether you can see how that's coming out or not, but uh, maybe a little bit. Um, so I'll do all of this and then basically we'll just let it dry. Right, this is dried now. Uh, I just had the car on here and I've just marked where the hole needs to go for the wires and also I've marked the insides of the tires. 
because what I'm going to do is on these two wheels, I'm going to actually drill a little couple of little holes to put a piece of wire through uh, to tie the car down, partly to keep it safe and also partly because the chassis is still slightly twisted. And when it's sitting on a flat surface, one of the wheels is slightly off the ground. So um, I'll yeah put a piece of wire over the opposing wheels just to kind of pull it down tight. So I'll drill out these holes and then we'll um, start putting some paint on this thing. Right, holes successfully drilled. So there's a couple of little ones there and there, and then a slightly bigger one there for the wire to go through. Um, so now, let's get a pallet in. And to paint this, I'm gonna start with this um, Studio Acrylics uh, Neutral Gray. Use a suitably big brush for this. And I'm just gonna give this a coat all over. sure we've got all these little nooks and crannies filled. Alright, uh, we'll let that dry for a minute and then we'll um, carry on from there. Right, now that's dry, we'll use um, this Liquitex, also neutral grey, but slightly darker grey than this one. Uh, we're going to add a little bit of a wash to it. So we need a little drop of that. A drop of water. That's probably way too much, but still. Something like that. So once again, I'll apply this all over and then we'll see what it looks like. Right, so I just hit that with a hairdryer and dried it and that looks quite good. So what I'm gonna do next is give it a dry brush with this um, buff titanium. So I'll give it a little dry brush with that. This is one of the big problems when the early learning center shut down is you couldn't get these brushes for a pound anymore. <laughs> All right, so we'll just give that a very light going over with this. And I do mean very light. Right, so hopefully you can see, so I say it's very light, I'm not going over it a lot, but just a little bit, I've done this side, but not this side yet. So hopefully you can see how that's coming out. I'll, um, I'll do the rest of it and then we'll go on from there. Right, so, that's the dry brushing done. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a few little pigment powders and stuff just to uh, create some stains on here. Now, I make these using um, these soft pastels. You can get them in Hobbycraft, you can get them in the works, things like that. Um, so I just realized actually that I don't have any black. So this is a good opportunity to kind of demonstrate how this works so uh, let's get a little knife and basically all you do is I say I just put these in these little pots but you just take a knife and just scrape like that you see 
And then in this particular instance, what we're going to do is take a suitable brush like this one and just kind of work it in a bit. Like that, and then blow off the excess, and uh, it gives us a nice little stain. You see, so they look like oil stains or you know rubber stain, whatever you know. But we'll just add a few here and there. So like up here where the engine would be. I say I can do it on this because it's flat, but if you wanted to apply this to a model, it's easier to put it into a pot first and then apply it with a brush. Like that. You see? And we'll do a couple of other colors as well, just because we can. Um, so I say if you're putting it in or out of the thing, just get some on the brush and just put it wherever you uh, wherever you want it. And obviously you can you know blend them together and stuff like that. They don't, you know they can cross over each other or however you want to do it. And there we go, you see. So I'll put a few more little bits and pieces on and then um, I think we'll be ready to seal this up and put the car back on it. Right, well I think that looks all right. Like I say, I didn't want to go too mad with it. But um, So what I'll do now is leave this to dry for a bit, um, make sure it's completely dry, and then uh, I'll take the masking tape off and then hit it with a coat of matte lacquer to seal it all and then we can um, put the car on it so we'll come back when it's time to do that right so that's got the car tied down um, and the wire fed through so the next thing I've got to do is get the uh, get the box in here and put that on top right this is going to be the fun bit um, I put the instruction manual for the speaker inside the box. I thought that was the best place to put it so that uh, if I ever need it, I know where it is. So let's, oh, let's plug this in. Uh, that way around. Just check that switch. Oh, that works. Right, so now we can put this. on top of here like that All right double check again uh, yep. all the lights are working so I think Now it's on. <laughs> I think now we can um, oh wrap this up because this is not the best camera angle. Uh, yes, let's uh, let's wrap this up. And here is our finished article. Uh, I am very very pleased with how this came out. The the kit was a bit of a nuisance, but it's come out really well. Um, adding the lights was fun, and obviously we've got the, our our Bluetooth speaker in the base. Um, speaking of which, uh, let's see how this works. Right, that's enough of that so I don't get a copyright strike. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this uh, little foray into um, adding electronics to your, to your projects. Uh, maybe I've given you a few ideas, I hope so. Uh, I'd obviously like to take a moment to thank my top tier patrons, Howell and Amy, for their continued support. 
and indeed uh, all of my patrons. Uh, I would not literally not be able to do this without their support. And if you want to come and join us on Patreon, you are more than welcome. It really does help out. Um, but in any case, thank you all for watching. And uh, as I said right at the beginning, I was trying to recreate that, um, that iconic image. So let's see uh, how we did. And I don't think we've done too bad a job there. Um, so yes, once again, I hope you've all enjoyed this little series. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.